if your head is turned to one side, then just turn your head in the other direction now to make sure that your neck gets an even rest on both sides. It's always important to round your spine when you've finished arching it and working on your flexibility. As a general rule, we never do two back bends in a row, not without rounding in between. Building flexibility in the spine is a slow process, but it's worth being patient for. And as we all know, patience is the first lesson that your yoga practice will teach you. When you're ready to move on, bring your hands out from between your feet. Leave your belly button over top of your legs and reach your arms over to one side. If you're reaching your arms over to one side and the belly is still over top of the legs, we should start to feel a very big stretch along one side of the body. As you breathe, you'll feel it move under the armpit and all down the side ribs. This is a wonderful stretch for the lats. They're very strong muscles that assist us in almost all of our postures. They help to support your shoulders and your chest. Very, very important for a comfortable neck and a healthy back. Make sure that you take your arms over to the other side as well. So walking the hands over to the opposite side. And once again, we're leaving the belly button right over top of the legs so that we're taking the shoulder joint far away from the hips. And we start to feel that stretch coming down under the shoulder all along the side ribs as you breathe. Keep reaching and keep breathing deeply. To finish, walk your hands right back to the center. Breathe into the lower back. When we're ready, we'll ragdoll back up one more time. Tightening the stomach muscles, they'll feel as though they're pushing you up from the center of your body. Let your arms drag to keep the shoulders soft and the head is the last thing to come all the way up. Roll your shoulders back and take a nice deep breath. And let the energy settle. Once you've had a chance for your energy to settle after that powerful posture, we're going to move down onto the floor. So sink your weight down to one side, coming off of the heels, and bring your legs out in front of you. We're going to take sinking boat down onto the ground. It's a little bit of work for the abdominal muscles, but we're slowly laying the spine onto the floor one vertebra at a time. So reach your arms forward with a deep inhale, and as you exhale, Round your back, drop your chin, 
and begin to lay down with that strong control from the center of the body. If you need to, you can grab the back of your legs to lower yourself down the rest of the way. Once you're down, you can feel free to reposition yourself on your mat so that your head and neck are comfortable. And you can also take a moment to press the curve of your back into the floor just so that you continue to move in slow motion. There's no rush to get where we're going. Let's slowly straighten the right leg out onto the floor and just leave it there for the moment. Pull your left knee in towards your chest with hands on top of the knee. The first step to shooting arrow is just to move the knee around a little bit. Pull the thigh down into your stomach, massaging the digestive system. This is a great place to stay if you'd rather just rest instead of doing this next posture. You always have options in your yoga class. If you're ready to move into shooting arrow, hold your knee in place firmly, take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, tighten your stomach muscles and lift the head and shoulders off of the floor. So we're using very, very strong muscles to lift the nose towards the knee. You can flex your foot if you want to. Some people prefer to point. If you'd like to move on, take your hands off of your knee and reach straight forward. If this is too much, you can always put your hands back on your leg for some support. Or if your neck is getting tired, try putting your hands behind your head. One more step is lifting the straight leg off of the floor just a few inches and holding it there. Lift a little higher if you can. See if you can get the shoulder blades right up off of the ground behind you. You can always bring that straight leg down to move back to step two. You can even take it back to step one with hands on the knee. Let's take another deep inhale and lift and very slowly release the posture, bringing the head back down to the ground and resting the neck muscles. Move that thigh around in the stomach a little bit more. You can pull your straight leg into the chest and rock on your back to massage those hard-working muscles. We'll move on by bringing the feet flat down onto the floor for spinal lift. Make sure that your heels are close enough to your body that you're just reaching for the back of your heel and ankle with your longest fingertip. Don't bring your feet so close that you can wrap your hand around your ankle. That's a little too close. Once you've got your arms straight down by your sides, feet separated by just a couple of inches, We'll begin to lift, but just one inch at first. So very slowly on your first inhale, bring only your tailbone off of the floor and then stop there for a moment. And when you're ready to continue, on the next inhale, you can slowly lift the hips up towards the sky. Feel free to squeeze your backside underneath you and that can help to stabilize the pelvis and the hips. We're lifting up very high here if we're flexible. Keep pressing the shoulders and the straight arms and hands down into the floor. We have the chin tucked towards the chest, and this is not only stretching the back of our neck, but we're also massaging the thyroid gland, very, very important part of your endocrine system. We're keeping the knees over the ankles and pressing the big toes into the floor. And if you feel like you can go further, clasp your hands together, rolling your straight arms and shoulders underneath you, and press the hips a little bit higher. If you have your hands clasped, your arms must be resting on the ground. Don't bend your elbows, and don't push your hands into your back. Deep breaths. Any time you need to rest, you can lower down slowly. But if you're comfortable, inflate like a balloon right at your center. If you would like to go a little bit higher, you can take flat hands to the back of your hips, resting some of your weight into your elbows, and very slowly lift up one leg, 
straightening the knee and sending the sole of the foot and the heel towards the sky. If this is too much for you, bring that leg down and go back to the second step instead. Very slowly, bringing that foot back down to the ground will change sides. So as soon as your right foot is firmly on the ground again, big toe pressing into the floor, you can lift your left leg up into the air. If you tried this advanced variation on the first side and it didn't feel comfortable, just stay where you are comfortable and you can even come down and rest if you've had enough. Postures like this send a lot of energy towards the crown of your head. We'll slowly, slowly bring that foot down to the ground. Lift up onto your toes just so that you can get your hands out from behind your hips, pressing the arms and shoulders down once more. And we'll begin to lower back down to the ground with control. So make sure that you're again, your arms are pressing down for support. Take a nice deep inhale and then as you exhale, we're lowering the spine back down where we came from. First the shoulder blades touch, then the curve of your lower back flattening down to the ground and finally your tailbone. Once you're all the way down, pull your knees into your chest, hands on top of the knees and just rock from side to side, massage your back. We'll move to the other side of our shooting arrow. So straighten your left leg out onto the floor, rest it down there and just leave it. With your hands on your right knee, massage the stomach by pulling your knee and thigh down into the abs. We're rotating that hip joint and you can always stay here if you want to. <laughs> 